Hello, welcome to the new Vaudeville Review, the show that celebrates life in Waldo County. Made possible with the support of Viking Lumber Company, Dutch Chevy Buick Pontiac, Colonial Plastering, Al, the Webmaster, the Colonial Theater, Village Soup Citizen, Power Chocolates, Arlene Roush, Massage Therapist, WERU 89.9 FM, Sapel. Signifies the pleasure which we crave. Yeah. Don't be shy, just do it. Yeah. Your clapping testifies that you are free and brave. Stay the course, don't yeah. lose it. Step right up, pull up a chair, let your cares vacate. Lose your worries if you dare, ease your adult pate. Rhymes and images spread across the page where anyone can see them. Head for the spotlight, shooting, scooting, booting across the stage. Big full bass a swinging, guitar sing along. House band plays those old familiar songs. That drum rat a tat tat banjo plank along. How the band plays familiar songs. Step, Step right up, pull up a chair, let your cares vacate. Lose your worries if you dare, ease your adult pain. What's your thoughts that signifies the pleasure which we like? How our dead boys are driving. We thought that we bought the wrong shampoo. Scoop a goop a glue in your blue suede shoes at the new Dupont Hotel. They're Thank you so much. Welcome to the New Vaudeville Review, the show that celebrates life in Waldo County, the world as we know it. Thank you for coming out today and joining our voyage into the uncharted waters of our, our collective zaniness, rising giddily on the swells of your laughter and plunging into the troughs, troughs of forgotten lines. With any luck, we'll sail into calm waters, unscathed by storms of just criticism. We have a great show for you today, tonight. Two great fiddlers, Maya and Anna French, coming up for you. Uh, and a new mime about town, Scott Cannon. But first, on a more serious note, we have an old friend in to discuss matters of some importance. Throughout the history of mankind, crises have plagued the species. From the giant saber-toothed cats to the Pleistocene era, down to the threat of global warming today, the species, life on Earth as we know it, has turned to science to lead us out of the jungle's darkness, out of the fears that besiege us, into the light of understanding. Today, as in days of yore, we turn to science for illumination. And through illumination, we find the confidence to solve the myriad problems we fear. Our band of science, professor of scientists, is on the front lines of the war against ignorance, fighting for truth, 
justice, and the American way. Please welcome Professor Scientist. Yes, um, uh, before we get started, I have a request. Oh, of course. I think since I always must leave great doings and cleverness in the laboratory to make appearances at these silly gatherings, that you should call me Your Highness. Um, excuse me. A title of greatness for great doings. Uh, try it. Okay. Professor Scientist Highness. No, no, no. no. Your Highness. But you're not my Highness. <laughs> Not my highness, your highness, like your highness, your, you know, your highness. Well, huh? that's what I meant the first time, your highness. Uh, better, uh, try it again. Professor, scientist, your highness. Oh, would it sound better? Uh, professor, your highness, scientist. Oh, <laughs> your highness, professor, scientist. No, your professor, highness, scientist. We've gotten off track. Can't you just tell us about your new discoveries? No, I cannot until you address me properly as your scientist, Professor Highness. Okay. Professor, scientist, your highness. Now my ears are unplugged. <laughs> well, I have heard that this is a time of year when sonnets and flowers and, worst of all, chocolates are flung about amongst couples in wild declarations of love and whatnot. I'm not so concerned about the necessity of this frivolity. However, I am concerned about the lies promulgated by the chocolate industry as to the aphrodisiac nature of their product. <laughs> and since I am a staunch believer in the American way, I will not tolerate fibbing. Hmm. <laughs> Ever watch C-SPAN? Oh. oh, yes, I, I rather enjoy those oceanographical adventures. Oh, oh. anyway, back to chocolates. <laughs> What's this about them, you know, not getting the ladies in the mood because, you know, I bought a bunch of those power chocolates for my sweetheart. And, you know, I was kind of hoping that, you know, uh... The chocolate is good for many things, especially those powerful chocolates of which you speak. But one thing chocolate, and especially those chocolates in the heart-shaped boxes, my God, is not good for is being sexy. All my tests prove it. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, how'd you test them? Well, it's too complicated to explain. It would, it would only confuse and upset you lay folk. Suffice it to say is that chocolate cannot get you a date. So I have constructed my own organization that will avidly work to promote truths as to these facts. It is the... Uh, Voluntary Institute of Angry Graduates Repealing All Subversive Understanding of Chocolate Knowledge Simplify. Well, come again. What, do I have to spell it out for you? Please do. Well, Voluntary Institute of Angry Graduates Repealing All Subversive Understanding of Chocolate Knowledge Simplify. Are you aware of the statement you're making, Professor? Yes, yes, I am. I am. I'll be very firm about this. Uh, I will not be all soft in my approach. Watch out, Giardelli, Toblerone, Hershey's. Viagra sucks. Who else does it say that? Um, let me ask you a question, Professor Scientist. Your Highness. Highness Scientist, have you been out on some bad dates lately? Request for information of such personal nature and this sort of scientific debriefings that's not very sporting. Not successful with the ladies, huh? Define success. <laughs> or maybe you've been going out with the wrong kind of sweeties. What, you know, what kind of women do you like? Milky? Uh, uh, dark? What? Uh, Liquor, liqueur field? Nine? I like mine semi-sweet, but all I ever get is bitter. Up, up. That's enough time for, for tonight. Thank you, Professor Highness Scientist, for joining us again once more to lead us from to truth, justice, and the American way. Professor Scientist. <laughs> Thank you 
sir. Okay, please welcome a great new performer in the Waldo County area, Scott Cannon, who is a great mind. Wow. Scott, mime is so inspirational. Uh, so, what, um, I understand you just recently moved to Belfast. Where, 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 where did you come from? Back there. And, uh, did, and, and when, when did you get here? I mean, when did you move to Belfast? Just, just uh, recently. And uh, did you have to go to school to study mime? Oh, well, um, okay, and uh, who, who inspired you as a, uh, as a, as a mime, mimograph? <laughs> oh, oh, there you go. Thank you so much. So, you, you need a reader. You need, you need a, uh, we need to pick a reader for, um, do you want to, you want to pick somebody? We need, we need somebody from the audience to come and read some. Yes! Love song for, the microphone isn't on. Is it on? All right. Love song for Judy by Rod McEwen. I gave my love a cherry. She spit the seed at me. I gave my love a chicken. She choked on the bone. I gave my love a baby. She went away. I... <laughs> the Maple. Dawn Breaks. I shoulder the axe. <laughs> the day is filled with timber to tumble. <laughs> timber to tumble? The day is filled with temper to tumble. <laughs> Into the woods I march. <laughs> Against the trees I go. I mark a maple for my own and lay the maple low. <laughs> I 
<laughs> no. <laughs> By Thomas Hood. The weather put the poet in a gloomy mood. No warmth? Okay. No warmth, no cheerfulness, no healthful ease, no comfortable feel in any member, no shade, no shine, no butterflies, no bees, no fruits, no flowers, no leaves, no ver birds, November. <laughs> Invictus by William Ernest Henley. Out of the night that covers me, Black as the pit from pole to pole. I thank whatever goals. <laughs> ah. Leisure. What is this life if full of care? I have no time to stand or stare. No time to stand beneath the <laughs> the arrow and the song. I shot an arrow into the air. It fell to earth. It fell to earth, I know not where. <laughs> For so swiftly it flew, the sight could not follow it in its flight. I breathed a song into the air. It fell to earth, I know not where. <laughs> For who has sight as keen and strong that it can follow the flight of song? <laughs> long, long afterward in an oak, I found the arrow still unbroke. And the song from beginning to end, I found again in the heart of a friend. <laughs> Scott Cannon. Okay, we got uh, next. We got a special treat. A few months ago, we had the pleasure of going to Belfast High School and seeing a West Side Story production in the local high school. And, and one of the things that's there's a lot of great stuff, a lot of uh, great performances there. And uh, but there's several really nice duet violin passages, and they were played by these two uh, young ladies that are coming up. Please welcome Anna and Maya French. Oh, I've got a couple of questions. Yeah. So, is there any new CDs or anything out that we should know about? Actually, yes. We just had a CD printed in December, and um, my mom wanted me to do a little promotion, so they'll be for sale at the end of the show. Great, great. 
So, and wait, I want to ask one more thing. This is always important. What, what grades are you guys in? Because it's amazing to me how great some of these young musicians are these days. I'm a junior in high school. Yep. I'm an eighth grader in middle school. All righty. Thank you. First tune we're going to do is Handsome Young Maidens. The next song that the girls are going to play is also going to feature a couple of other people that were performing in that show, West Side Story. We've got Talientes and Miriam Baldwin are going to dance to Lover's Waltz. And um, these guys, I, I, I got, also got to see them um, dance at Nutcracker Suite down in Camden. And uh, a lot of you I know saw them dancing over at the Waterfall Arts on New Year's Eve. It was like created quite a story. These guys are great. So anyway, we'll get out of here.
Thank you so much. That was great. So we have a little message from our uh, corporate underwriter now. Um, we're looking. Whoops. Yeah, okay. You're ready for the big date. You bought flowers, some chocolates. He even cleaned up the old beater because this Valentine's Day, you're going to pop the question. Ask Mona to marry you. <laughs> you're wicked nervous, but that's what it's all about, right? You crank up the beater and head out. Pick up Mona. Oh, Bob, you finally cleaned out all the beer cans. <laughs> <laughs> yep. You know, maybe now that Duke's been dead for a year, you might think about vacuuming out the dog hairs. <laughs> what a gal. Heading on down to the boathouse parking lot. It starts raining that nice, cold, icy February rain. You often get around here in February. And you flip on the wipers, hoping for a small miracle. As they start, the headlights dim, and an acrid smell wafts through the cab of your beater. No matter, you're almost there. Heading down to the hill to that pinnacle, that zenith of romantic expectation, the engine groans, then coughs, as your now powerless chariot coasts and then slides to the side of the road, smoke billowing from under the hood. Well, what the heck? You're almost there, right? Better pop the question before the heat completely escapes out into the cold wet beyond the foggy windows. Out come the flowers. <laughs> Bob, you know I like roses, but you know I really can't see them in the dark. And besides, all I can smell is essence of dying car and already died dog. <laughs> well, she loves chocolates. They'll definitely put her in the mood. Oh, Bob, come on, it's freezing in here. How are we gonna get home? In the last ditch effort, you blurt out the burning question. Oh, for Christ's sake, Bob, you think I'd marry anybody with an old beater like this? <laughs> oh, rejection, dejection, what can you do to win her heart in hand? You check all the won't ads, but you own a grown-up car, something Mona will be proud to ride in. But it's February, and money's pretty tight now. Where can you turn for help? Eighty-one years of making great deals, building our business the right way. Helpful sales staff, quick friendly service, community support, all help to preserve us yesterday and today. For automotive needs, Dutch Chevrolet. <laughs> You mean, you'll take my old car on a trade-in? Absolutely. And you'll finance it right here now? We're here to make it work for you. Wow. Mona, Mona, look at my beautiful new car. Oh, oh, oh Bob, of course I'll marry you. <laughs> but the new dog's got to stay in the back seat. <laughs> <laughs> Dutch Chevrolet, Pontiac, Buick, and Geo at the intersections of Route 3 and 1, Belfast, Maine. Yesterday and today, for automotive needs, Dutch Chevrolet. Thanks for being here for this episode. Please join us next episode to hear our point of the month, Linda Buckmaster, more Scott Cannon, more humor, more great music from Willie Kelly, Jeff Dinsmore, and Bennett Konesny. We'll see you soon. A new vaudeville review has been made possible with the generous support of Viking Lumber Company, Dutch, Chevy, Buick, Pontiac, the Colonial Plastering, Al, the Webmaster, the Colonial Theater, Village Soup Citizen, Arlene Rausch, Massage Therapist, Power Chocolates, WERU 89.9 FM, SAP